Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And guys, today what we're going to be talking about are my top five sleeper tight ends for the 2015 NFL season. I know guys, we're getting real close to draft season for some of you. Some of you might have already done your drafts. And hopefully this list will help you guys out with maybe finding some guys who are lower on the tight end list that might be able to help out your team if, you know, for some reason you didn't get one of those elite guys. So again, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to start off from the top of the list down to the bottom in terms of average draft position. So the first guy on here is going to be the guy who's currently being drafted the highest. Last guy is being currently drafted the lowest. So we're going to start off with number one, Greg Olson of the Carolina Panthers. Now, Greg Olson's currently going... 52nd off the board on average draft position, which means he's a fourth rounder in some leagues in your in your 14 team leagues. Most leagues he's gonna be a fifth rounder, but I still think that Greg Olson actually presents some pretty good value for you here if you're taking him in the fifth or even in the sixth round, as a lot of people are. Now, here's the thing. I think Greg Olson has the potential to be the number two tight end in PPR leagues this year. I know that sounds a little bit crazy when you've got guys like Jimmy Graham ahead of him, and I know a lot of people are high on Travis Kelsey, as am I. I think Travis Kelsey is going to be a great fantasy tight end this year, but I think Greg Olson presents a higher floor than either Jimmy Graham or Travis Kelsey. The worst case scenario for Greg Olson, I mean, what could really go wrong for him? I mean, everything is kind of in the right position right now for Greg Olson to have a monster season. I mean, we look at what they have there at wide receiver right now, it's pretty much nothing with Kelvin Benjamin being injured. I mean, Devin Funches really hasn't shown much, and I mean, they've got guys like Ted Ginn and that kind of thing, but I'm not really expecting any of those guys to really have a breakout season. So you look at Greg Olson as being probably the guy who's going to lead this team in targets, probably the guy who's going to lead them in receptions, yards, and potentially even touchdowns. Now, granted, Carolina is not the best passing game. They're not going to put up monster numbers this year in the passing game. But either way, even if you can't get a guy in the best passing offense in the league, what you're looking for is just a guy who's going to put up quality numbers. And I think that that's what Greg Olson really presents. The upside is there for him to get near 100 catches this year. And if he does that, I mean, 1,000 yards seems pretty likely. And if you consider the fact that he's a pretty good red zone body as well, there's no reason to think that he can't approach 8 to 10 touchdowns this year as well. On the low side, I just think he's very, very safe. So I'm not really worried about him. I think the low end of what he could do would still make him a top six fantasy tight end this season. So I think he's, other than Rob Gronkowski, the safest guy that you can take at tight end. And I understand currently he's going fourth among tight ends. I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Um, I, I mean, I, I would certainly probably take him above Travis Kelsey in a PPR league right now, and I might even take him above Jimmy Graham, depending on the situation. Certainly his value, though, to me, is much better than either of where those players are going. So that's why I'm considering him a sleeper, I guess, is what I'm going with. I, I, I mean, the big thing here, like I said, is value for where you're drafting him. Next on the list, guys, we have Owen Daniels of the Denver Broncos. Now, Owen Daniels is a guy that kind of started off not really being on anybody's radar, and I think he's really jumped up over the past couple of weeks as people have really considered what this guy could potentially do in this offense. Owen Daniels obviously not a guy who's going to put up superstar numbers. We don't expect him to match what Julius Thomas has done over the past couple of years. But at the same time, he's stepping in as the starting tight end in an offense that has Peyton Manning at quarterback. And, and really, Peyton Manning's pretty much made most of his tight ends fantasy relevant. Most of the guys that he's played with have finished in the top 10. And I don't think Owen Daniels is going to change anything with that. I think that there's a very good reason to believe that Owen Daniels is going to finish as a top 10 tight end and possibly even as a top five guy, depending on what he can do near the red zone. So it's a big, big risk right now if you're looking for a guy who, if you're drafting him too high, that's a big risk right now. I've seen quite a few people drafting him way higher than what he should be going, but in a lot of leagues, he's going way too low as well. His current ADP right now puts him in the eighth round. I think that's way too low. He's seventh among tight ends in average draft position. I don't see any reason to think that he shouldn't be a top five or six tight end right now. And to me, I mean, the value is just there for Owen Daniels. What, what's the, again, just like Greg Olson, what's the worst case scenario that can happen right now for an Owen Daniels? It's very, very tough to imagine a situation where he's not going to put up quality numbers this year. So that's why I think Owen Daniels is definitely worth having as your starting tight end this season. And uh, I'm definitely looking for him if I miss out on one of the elite guys. Third on the list, guys, we have Delaney Walker of the Tennessee Titans. Now, this is a guy who has been 
kind of forgotten about in fantasy circles, and I'm not really sure that I understand why. I think a lot of people are considering that he's not really like some superstar talent. Sure, I understand that, but the reality is that Delaney Walker was a very productive fantasy tight end this past season. He finished with 63 receptions for 890 yards and four touchdowns. Now, four touchdowns is low. 63 receptions isn't anything special, but he almost had 900 yards receiving. That's pretty damn impressive for a guy who played in a horrible offense. I expect Tennessee to be substantially better this year with Marcus Mariota at quarterback, who is a, he's an obvious improvement from anything that they had last year at the position. And I don't see any reason to think that he can't be very, very good this year for fantasy purposes. He's a guy who you can take kind of as a, a tight end if you just miss out on all the top guys. And I still think you're going to get good production out of him. I think he has top five upside. I really, really do. I have him currently ranked as my sixth tight end on the board, but he's going as the 10th tight end off the board at the in the ninth round, the end of the ninth round, actually. So I think you get great value out of Delaney Walker. I don't think you have to reach on him, and I think that he can produce good numbers for you in this Tennessee offense. Fourth, we have Antonio Gates. Now, I completely understand why some people are completely disregarding Antonio Gates. He is suspended for the first four games of the year. I get it. I'm not expecting, obviously, that he's going to get unsuspended or anything like that. But the truth is that Antonio Gates was a monster from a fantasy standpoint this past season. A lot of people don't remember this, but Antonio Gates actually finished as the number two overall fantasy tight end in 2014. He finished ahead of Jimmy Graham, ahead of Martellus Bennett, ahead of Greg Olson, ahead of all these guys who people think are an obvious improvement from Antonio Gates. I don't believe that's necessarily true. Now, granted, I'm not saying that Antonio Gates is going to match the numbers that he did last year, even in a 12-game span. I don't expect him to put up the same type of per-game numbers. But at the same time, Antonio Gates, even if he does take a step back, is a still very consistent player. He's a guy who can put up touchdowns, and he's a guy who can really help your fantasy team. I think he's going way too low in fantasy drafts right now. He's going as the number 15 tight end off the board. That is way too low. Again, I understand you have to have another tight end for the first four games of the year, but when you get back to the having Antonio Gates in your roster, he's a guy that can really be a difference maker for you, and he can put up big, big numbers from the tight end position, which is something that is very, very rare at tight end. So I like Antonio Gates this year, especially if you get another tight end earlier in the draft. If you Even if you go with like two tight ends back-to-back -to -back toward the end of your draft, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. If you get him and a Tyler Eifert or something like that, I think you're getting pretty good value and potentially really good upside out of Antonio Gates as well as Tyler Eifert. But but the consistency of Antonio Gates is really what makes him most valuable, obviously. And then last on the list, guys, we have Richard Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers, currently going as the number 17 tight end off the board in the end of the 13th round in 12-team leagues. That is just way too low for a guy that has this type of upside. Now, granted, I understand Green Bay is not really a team that has passed to their tight ends that much over recent years, but that's because they really haven't had a lot of talent at the tight end position. Andrew Corliss is okay, but I don't think he's anything fantasy special or anything like that. So to me, I look at Richard Rodgers, a guy who actually beat out Andrew Corliss in the preseason this year and has become the quote-unquote starter there at tight end for Green Bay. I think he's got a lot of potential here. A lot of people are looking, obviously, at Ty Montgomery or Jeff Janis as being the guy who steps in and kind of plays that third wide receiver role in Green Bay, but it could very well be Richard Rodgers who ends up being the most benefited player based on Jordy Nelson being injured. So I, I, to me, I really like where he's going right now. You can take him with your last pick in most fantasy drafts and really not have to worry about anybody else taking him. And if you again, if you miss out on one of those elite tight ends, a lot of these guys are very, very similar to one another. They don't really present a whole lot of, of um, you know, like their floor is very, very poor. They're, they're not going to probably produce amazing numbers on a week-to-week -week basis. But you're really what you're looking for is the upside from most of these guys going at the end of your draft. And I think that that's what Richard Rodgers really presents in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers, obviously, pretty much the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I don't really think many people would debate that. So he's got great value here in this Green Bay offense. And I think he's going to produce big, big numbers here for the Packers this season. I mean, we're talking potential top eight fantasy tight end, and he's going 17 right now at tight end and I, I just think there's just way too many guys going ahead of him that don't nearly present the upside that he does so I'm a big fan of him if you miss out on all the other tight ends 
So that's gonna do it guys. I think that uh, we're gonna put up one more video here. We're gonna do our top five sleepers at the quarterback position and then we're gonna move on and I'm gonna do a video where I release my full top 200 for the year. So be on the lookout for that later this afternoon guys. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button and of course subscribe to this channel if you are new. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I really truly do appreciate it and I will talk to you guys next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.